So I never really am interested in seasonals. I'm not the kind to go through every single one of them and judge how well each of them did. My thought process of deciding what to watch has always been either A, a friend of mine demanded me to watch it, or B, I'm curious and it looks interesting. So being told that I have to check out almost every seasonal for the Castaway Anime Podcast, which I was featured on, this is a first to me. It's outside of my comfort zone, and being anime illiterate, I mean I don't actually watch that many shows, I spend most of my time just watching YouTube documentaries or discovering weird funky music, you would be surprised at how much I actually don't know about anime. Anyway, I went ahead and go through each of them one by one. Some of them are good. Some of them are bad. Of course, in most situations, I'm not the one to judge because apparently, while I do enjoy some of them, there are more popular, better executed ones. But hey, this is a first to me, so what the heck. But one of them came across as a surprise. So this thing, a style life great escape. Public reception, terrible. I mean, it's worse when I first saw it, but it's still very much not popular. Understandably, I am not looking forward to this. But being who I am, I decided to take on what I thought would be the worst one first, so that I don't have to deal with it later. And uh, it's complicated, but I, 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 I like this? Let's go through the basics first. I know that there's something glaring about the visuals, but we're gonna get back to it later. Okay, so. It's the far future, and now the world is segregated into clusters, and it is heavily forbidden for someone to cross borders. Think North and South Korea. As a consequence, some select people are tired of their respective clusters and wanted to flee. Enter the extractors. Their job is to help their clients escape and establish a new life in other clusters. They'll do anything to help their clients escape, only with a catch. The clients have to sacrifice everything and anything if they do. They have to start from scratch. The extractors are not responsible for any and all consequences from what happened. But to some, it's a worthy sacrifice. Just to, uh, as the title suggests, establish a new life. A metaphor for, well, escapism. Ego death, if you will. Leaving all their past behind for a new beginning. Sounds reasonable enough so far, right? Enter our main cast. Equa, a cheery girl whom carries the whole group. Her smile drives everyone forward. Martes. A bratty slime girl who can liquefy herself in tight situations. Oh, did I mention that these are weirdo mythical beings too? There is nothing worth a note to her other than she loves Equa and hates our next character, Ferris. Void by fucking Rita Kanashi, of all people! How the hell did she got here? Also, my personal favorite. She gives absolutely zero fucks to everyone else and also have heavy Stinson tendencies. Alga. The robot that's responsible for the tech hacking and tracking and uh, those computer things and everything. And uh, uh, the dog. Uh, he just exists. He just sat there. He doesn't even have any dialogue. He just speaks dog. Together, they went through ups and downs to get their clients escape North Korea. Now that sounds cool and all, but there is this one big problem. It is shit. Uh, okay, let me explain. Beyond the visuals, which I'll promise we'll get back to later, the actual subject they encounter here is just absolute balloony. So, to give you an example, mild spoiler alert. A mafia member whom are tired of his mafia job to pursue his passion of magical girls. Penguins with guns from a communist party wanting to get democracy and free will. And my personal favorite, a city where it is widely believed in their religion that wearing underpants is a blasphemy. Someone wants to escape it so that she could wear a pantsu of her own. I should probably mention at this point that I actually love how wild the topics can get at times. Where the hell did that come from? It's oddly amusing to me. It rains on that so bad at its good scale. Who the hell thinks a weeboo mafia is a good idea? And why the hell am I enjoying this? Like, I don't know what happened, but this show goes in the wildest of directions, and somehow, I like the direction? It's honestly hilarious, and it did let a good chuckle out of me. In fact, this is probably the hardest I've laughed watching a show in a while. The episode about the Weeb Mafia is probably what sold me, since after seeing that, I can't help but just wonder what the hell could happen next. I do not know if they are intentionally memeing or if it's just a bad idea, but by all metrics, this is a wild ride. And I am riding it. Absolute boulder dash. Honestly, the worst bits from the show is when they don't go absolute batshit crazy. Some of the later episode does get a bit stale, as in, instead of wild wacky adventure with questionable writing and direction, it's just generic hero story number 5083. 
The wildness is intriguing to me. The fact that at times they would just go all in on their weird ideas is fascinating. And honestly, it's not every day that I feel this kind of thing. And so this was a bizarre show. I watch it because I'm just interested to see how goofy this thing gets. There is one episode where it talks about the two sides of personality that the slime girl Martes had, and they did it like they're playing Ace Attorney with the two parties fighting about the best action to do in this situation. I don't know what it is about it, but for some reason to me, it's just so funny to see a grand old case of inside of you there are two wolves being depicted as two parties in a trial. I actually prefer this to Battleline and Celeste. But there is another side of things. This show apparently goes on a more dramatic direction after episode 6. It talks about how important a good leader is to the group, and also a world building segment about a cluster resetting because it doesn't have enough inhabitants. As embarrassed as I am to admit this, th this show that I continued purely expecting to be perplexed at how stupid it gets actually manages to let a tear out of me. Yes, the dramatic episode hits, and I do not know where it came from. But I'm genuinely enjoying my time with this. Not even ironic love that I anticipated. I'm seriously touched. How does this happen? I'm gonna spare the details now because this is the bit where I genuinely don't want to spoil. But rough description, episode 6 and 7 talks about how important Equa, the main character, is to the group. What she is and also how much they rely on her. And episode 8, oh boy, episode 8. It starts off normally but as we learn about the client, or rather, the person whom the client was supposedly running away from, we get to learn her true nature of why the client wants to run away and why she actually wants him to run away, and the reveal of what's going to happen in this cluster now that there's only one person left, followed by the girl's last dying wish. I, I genuinely like how they did that, how they ramped up the intensity, how they slowly introduced the conflict and the final reveal, something about it just hit me, and again, surprised me. I felt like I'm talking to a wall right now because I can just smell your ass right now commenting Oh bad CG Joe bad bad take L we she yo plus you fell off Hey you know what? Say what you want But I genuinely like this bit Actually The CG <sighs> So let's finally talk about the elephant in the room The thing is made by Polygon Pictures It's full CG And the CG is probably one of the reasons for the stunningly low rating and y'all, can we talk for a moment? Just you and me, yes? Just just let, let's get personal for a moment, yeah? Can y'all please stop overreacting? I understand that CG in anime has sort of been leaving a bad aftertaste on people, with most anime studios just using it as a haphazard cost-saving measure or a poor composite over environments. But I don't think it's fair judging all CG is bad because of it. I think it's good to take a sit back and appreciate the ones that cared. The ones that use CG intentionally, that has found a reason to use them stylistically, beyond just a cost-cutting measure. Like there is a certain charm to hand-animated animations, there is also a certain charm with animations like this also. Combining the well-calculated power of computer raster with human-like elements, it allows for some cool stuff that would be otherwise impractical or downright impossible with other measures. While also not looking too stiff and mechanical as with the case with regular CG animated cartoons. And to me, the one that I deem looked good held a special place in my heart. It shows the potential of this underrated and overhated medium. A computer render doesn't have to be photorealistic, you know? Pixar? You can in fact not like the style of this animation, but don't just deem that all CG is bad because you saw that one poorly rendered spider in the other show you watch. And also, just keep in mind, like with any of these, anyone has their own opinions, just remember not to be a bitch about it. That said, the CG animation here is definitely 100% uh, one of the better ones. I mean, I have my own preferences, but this looks passable enough. They remind me of Suns again with how they move and how they look, but like, it's not as polished, neither it is as a uh, unique. It's not exactly breathtaking. Most of the times, it's just almost passable. Sometimes it actually looks pretty neat. And other times, uh, um, uh, yeah, no. Heck, as much as I am an advocate for CG anime, if this wasn't done with CG, I'd reckon I probably would have enjoyed as much, if not better. It's not like Bang Dream where the CG is very much an integral part of why the animation style can be how it is now. I mean have you I mean have you seen how they look like before they switch studios? It's awful. It's just awful. Anyway, it's not mandatory. And I don't know what advantage this gives, other than the obvious budget savings. Uh, not every studio or publisher is made out of money, remember? 
Did they run out of budget? But if you ask me, it's decently well done. I kinda like it at times, and the VFX looks good enough. I'll give this extra points for bravery, good execution, and desire to be not like other girls. Honestly, looking at Polygon Pictures' as other works, this is not exactly their peak. I mean, their part in Love, Death, and Robots look absolutely stellar. It's honestly amazing. This, though... Uh... Again, compared to the usual shit that CG anime is up to, it's one of the better looking ones. It actually looks like they tried. Oh, also fun fact, this is the first full length thing they rendered with their own in-house render engine. It's pretty cool actually. The aforementioned and quite frankly underappreciated care that they put on this. And if the love, death and robots thing they did after this was also rendered using the same pipeline, that I am legitimately impressed. Back to the thing, it's good enough. But there are some bit that very much still looks questionable. It's not the best example of NPR 3D CG I've seen. I've personally seen better in VTuber PVs made with literal free software. Actually, fuck it, whole life has better 3D models. But hey, I didn't watch this for the visuals anyway. So what the heck? Why bother? I like the show for all the good and bad reasons. It's just a wild ride. I felt like this analyst thread post is the best description of it I've seen. This is a silly show made by clever people. They know how to make shit and I am all for it. For all the goofiness and also how they mixed in with genuine touching moments without feeling weird for my monkey brain, this is not something I've ever seen nor experienced before. Imagine intentionally watching the room or something, expecting it to suck, only to leave with tears. I, I honestly don't know, because most of the time, I felt like I'm just flabbergasted by how wild this thing is, but part of me wanted to give praise on just how well it executed the wild things. This is probably why I'm not popular. I always have the most unpopular of opinions. I am not like other girls. I almost want to put this on the same tier as Holo no Graffiti. Just nonsensical humor that I love because it just goes everywhere. But whereas Hologra is basically a glorified Chimot shitpost with a slightly higher budget, this one is a proper release, and honestly at some point has signs of actual proper direction given to it. So again, I'm on the fans. If we're talking about what it is and my honest thoughts about it, I'd say it's successful for being stupid. It has a stupid idea, it's stupid that it went from goofy to dramatic with no warning whatsoever, it's stupid that it exists, but I love every second of it. So. For the moment you all been waiting for, you're probably wondering how many scores I would rate it out of 5, out of 10, out of 100, is this better than Sangetsu no Lion, Barakamon, Spy X Family, new game? So without further ado, I'll give a Stab Life Great Escape, a generous but totally deserving Quantum Superposition out of 10, I have no fucking idea. You see, it's like that whole graffiti situation again. Because if we're talking about strict enjoyment, I technically enjoyed every second of this. Every peaks and valleys, even the bad beats are amusing to me. But technically speaking, I should not enjoy this as much as I am right now. Haphazard unnecessary CG, random fan surface, nonsensical plot and dialogue, generic character design, likewise tropey characters, why the hell do I sleep on k -On but glued to my screen watching this shit show? There's other actually good shows that I've been putting out for a while now, and yet this is the one that I catched up to. Also yes, Crunchy, rest assured I did finally watch on Gatsun no Lion. Just watch Fifi Floratize instead. In the end though, does the technicalities really matter? Like if I watch shows for my own personal enjoyment and I personally enjoy watching this thing, then what gives? It fulfilled its purpose, and I felt satisfied. Of course, I'm probably the only 4 person in this world that likes this, but human taste for everything is subjective anyways, and I personally are fine with it. Sure, it's probably the worst thing you've ever seen, and I'm very sure that you won't relate to what I said, but that's not the point, was it? I enjoy the show, for better and for worse, and for that, I give this thing props for existing. Do I recommend this show? Uh, only if you cared, and you probably wouldn't. If you do check it out though, I say just expect nothing and let the show take you wherever it wants. But I probably already spoiled everything for you, so there is that. In all honesty, this is just my own personal guilty pleasure. What I do definitely recommend though is for you to look for your own guilty pleasures. There's a lot of fish in the sea. With media ranging from mainstream to extremely niche, well-defined to experimental, from really good to so bad that it's good, you have a wide range of options. Don't get so fixated on the ratings. I'm sure what you like is probably not the same as what the masses like. If you haven't felt that yet, well, maybe eventually you would find something that fits you and only you. 
Something special. Something that you wouldn't expect yourself to like. A side of yourself you didn't know existed. A taste so acquired that you're the only person in the world who could have enjoyed something like that. So go wild. Be free. Dig through the pile of poo that the people kept shitting on. Try everything that you can get your hands on. Try something new. Terrible advice, but if you're tired of the usual stuff that you're up to, then maybe this method is worth a shot. And maybe then you'll find a whole new genre that you didn't know existed. So yeah, bad show, but I like it. Fuck off.